In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Greetings. I'm blessed to be with you today. As much as it looks like I'm in the St. Thomas Chapel, I'm in the comfort of my home with a picture of the chapel in the background. Hopefully it makes you feel like we're there together. I hope you had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. It turned out to be a nice day on Monday, despite the less than favorable forecast. Starting the day with prayer and reflection, for those that have given their lives in defense of our country, made the day a little more meaningful than just a day off from work. Doing a few things outside in the yard, talking with some neighbors, and then grilling for dinner was the extent of the day. I'm thankful that as I realize there are many people not able to do any of those things due to the current circumstance in their life. Today we celebrate the life of Venerable Pierre Toussaint, who lived from 1766 to 1853. He was born in Haiti and brought to New York City as a slave. Pierre died a free man and a well-known Catholic. He learned the trade of hairdressing and worked for many rich New York people, which enabled him to support himself after he was freed. He was generous to those in need, both financially and by opening his home to orphans. He chose to cooperate with God's grace, eventually becoming a sign of God's generous love. We're celebrating Thursday of the seventh week of Easter, and in our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Paul continues his travels and finds himself in trouble again for preaching about hope in the resurrection. In John's Gospel, Jesus is speaking to God, his Father, praying for the unity for the disciples. Unity that we need today. Thank you for watching and participating today. I would typically invite all gathered to turn and greet each other. Please still do this as we envision each other's handshakes, hugs, and smiles. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees. So he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say, <clears throat> excuse me, there is no resurrection or angels or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. 
The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, My Lord, are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, alleluia. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his high eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be, in, be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you loved them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We hear in the reading from the Acts of the Apostles that Paul is held by the Romans for his preaching of Jesus' teachings and his resurrection. And the Jews of Jerusalem want to have him killed. He's challenging them to a level they aren't comfortable with. He gets released because they find out He's a Roman citizen. Since the Sadducees didn't believe in the new developments in the faith of Israel, such as angels, spirits, and the resurrection like the Pharisees did, 
Paul used this difference to his advantage. He stirred things up between them and was taken away to safety. Paul knew his audience and those who were in charge. I've heard that saying before that you should always know your audience before you address them. When you can relate to them on whatever platform you're speaking about, they will be more engaged and it's more likely that you will connect with them. Paul connected pretty well based on the reaction he received and then he was brought to safety. And then the Gospel of John gives us Jesus' prayer to his Father for unity. Unity and love, obedience, and the relationship between Jesus and his Father. This was demonstrated many times in Scripture when Jesus would go off and pray to his Father. Although in, also in Matthew's Gospel, when God appeared out of the cloud and said, This is my Son with whom I am well pleased. He knew that if the disciples didn't possess this unity, it would cause a block to the evangelization. It's easy to discount someone trying to evangelize if they're not in agreement with doctrine and known truths. It is so important to be in unity with our sisters and brothers during ordinary times, for sure, but especially now. The times we're facing now can be much more bearable when our relationship with God is on solid ground and relationships with each other are not in trouble. Have you ever worked for a company where there are multiple levels of management? You may receive instruction from a supervisor to complete a task and then later on receive a different set of instructions from another manager in the company to do something different. It can be very frustrating and confusing, right? Soon there may be unsettled feelings, lack of trust, and possibly a need to change jobs. Jesus wants the world to know and believe that God sent him and that God loves us as he loves Jesus. We hear it told to us, but do we believe it? Does it give us the confidence to face whatever challenges are sent our way? Jesus wants us to have the confidence right now to know that God loves us with the same love that he loves Jesus. I know there are people questioning that right now. With circumstances as they are, I can understand that feeling. But then there are also others with unstoppable faith and witness it every day, no matter what the circumstances may be. We can all help each other and love each other. I have many people in my life that have unstoppable faith, and for that I'm grateful. I'm willing to bet that you have people in your life that are a witness to that kind of faith too. That witness can be val valuable in trying to understand the differences that have come up regarding closing down and now reopening our country. That unstoppable faith reminds me, no matter what, God is in control. He is always there for us. Jesus said that he would never leave us, though he was going back to his Father. That gives me hope in the future. We are one in God, and that makes me feel loved. May the Lord bless us, keep us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Today we pray for the people in our Book of Intentions and for those who wrote them, and for all those who need our prayers in our faith community, that Jesus' healing and forgiving touch reaches them and because of their faith brings them relief. We pray to the Lord. For the church, especially for those who have a vital role 
in determining who will serve as our bishop, that they will be filled with all the graces and wisdom to make their decision. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those not seeing the face of God in the world, that his presence may be felt today through another's prayer, smile, calming voice, or caring gesture. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for the sick, the suffering, lonely and isolated in hospitals and nursing homes, and for those who have died, that God's promise of eternal life received at baptism be known to them, and that those who grieve be comforted through their faith and the faith of those around them. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for those intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the effects of your sacred blessing, O Lord, make themselves felt among your faithful, to prepare with spiritual sustenance the minds of all, that they may be strengthened by the power of your love to carry out works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us virtually offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. And at this time, I would like to offer the Padre Pio prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As we are still in the month of May, let us pray the Hail Mary, honoring our Mother Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray.
May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring, and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'd just like to thank you again for sharing in this prayer service today. And I, again, look forward to when we will gather together again at St. Thomas. Until then, be safe, stay healthy. The Lord be with you. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day.